All right, so I'm actually set up here at one wall. Got my two high rise, high stack carp rods. Not carp rods, they're aim rods, aren't they? My carp fishing technique, high stack fishing. I'm out there about 35 yards. Fingers crossed, I get to show you a fish. A lot of anglers here is a day to get out of water, so you're going to get this weekend, Saturday. I'm going to give it a few hours just as a test to see if we can, in fact, pick up fish at distance on the gravel bars. Nobody down that side of me. I think there's a guy up there, maybe float fishing or pellet waggling out there somewhere, about four or five swims down. And I've put this up just to give me a bit of soundproofing from the, uh, from the wind. It's not the world's greatest day here. As you can see, it's grey, overcast. Cool wind, northeasterly wind. Doesn't feel particularly fishy, I have to say, but you never know. The method is here, the technique should work. Fingers crossed I get to show you a fish or two. But if I don't do any good on a couple of hours, three hours this afternoon, because I've been working all morning, so I just literally ran to get this time squeezed in here. If this doesn't work, I'm going to come back and have another go. I'm pretty confident that I will get. <laughs> what? Yeah, I am uh, pretty confident that uh, this method might actually work. Hang on, guys, let me get myself organised. Get this camera on my head. Ouch. And see if we can't get you a fish at range. And look, do you know what this is, guys? A lot of you people that watch me know this is very, very unusual. It's what you call new line. I actually filled up with the line. Well, I didn't fill up, I put 100 yards on, splashed out. I'm going to keep an eye on this other rod as well. I've got my new mad fish landing net there. Let's come under there. I'm going to stand right there by this tip so you can hopefully see the action on the fish I'm fighting and you might even get to see this one drag over as well. You never know here. Anything can happen in the next half hour. Wow, this one's going well. I can't do my normal jabbering, shouting self because there's obviously loads of anglers around here. Not all of them really want to be bothered by somebody filming. They're not here to film. I am trying to bring you a bit of information, something that might help some of you beginners and novices, older guys maybe that come back to the sport, might just give you that extra fish like this, get that rod bent. Not a big fish because it's going down with lots of sharp little tugs. Yeah, small fish, I thought so. I say small, probably three and a half pounds or something like that. And I'm hoping to leave this other rod here out. You can see probably down the line there, I'm over in line with those white brushes over there. That's my sort of mark. This one's going crazy. And now come under the other line. Here we go. They just fly into these landing nets like that. Lovely gold colours on this one, look. Gold belly. Get it back in. Away he goes. Well, that's proof that that method works. I look forward to another bite. There's no question, guys, that this method works, because it looks like, I mean, deep doo-doo. It looks like it's a double, a double whammy. What have I done to deserve this? I'll get good at this now, look. Oh God almighty. This is a new method for me. I'll be reels about to fall off. <laughs> I've got no freaking reel on now. Jeez. Let's go take this off. Just excuse me a minute, I'm gonna, oh God. You up there, Andy? If you could, oh, it's all right. I saw my ones come off. I had two, I had two on at the same time. 
<laughs> I'm okay now, it's just ping. I've been playing it for five minutes and I thought I'm going to need help with this one, but I'm okay now. It is murder and mayhem, as you've no doubt gathered, and as always happens on the Tell You Awesome show. This is my rod attachment, rubber band. I've made two throw outs. I've had a single cart which I couldn't even film, and then I had a double take. God, is this the method? Is this the method? On that gravel bar. Some of these fish here, I mean, they do scrap, no question, they're good scrappers. Oh, dig, digging and digging and digging. I've got a feeling, I've only got a little bit of time here today. This is all just an experiment, people. It looks like another totally awesome experiment that could bear some fruit. If he pings off, I don't mind. In fact, probably just where the other one came off. Reels falling off, my shoes will be coming off, I don't know. Clothes will be coming off. Perhaps not. Not pretty sight. Nice common carp. Caught a distance. On the edge of that gravel bar. I'm assuming I'm on the edge of the gravel bar. Perhaps I should be using the countdown technique. And the double hookup with something else. Thank goodness the other one came off. I can't wait to get my rods out again. If they come on the feed, I could pick up more. Well guys, that was a success. Immediately. Gone quiet now for a second. But what I've done is tighten up on the quiver tips. I've got them really, really tight, really bowed over up there. In the hope that that sort of helps set the hook at distance. I mean, anything could happen, couldn't it? Anything. And I'm way out there. You could just see a hint of um, glistening in the ripples there, which is where the oil is coming off my ground bait there. So it's just a question of waiting. And over here, I've dropped a handful down here. I'll just show you. You won't be able to see anything. But there is a handful or so down there that I've dropped, and I think maybe carp are coming in there. You can see the oil just popping on the surface there. Hopefully you'll be able to see that with the camera if I hold it still. That wrapped oil just popping, just popping on the surface, bits of it. Let me put some in, I'll show you. All I've done is soak it. I've used less bran in this. Casting at difference. Here we go. I'm going to squeeze it because I want any carp going in there to dig it up. That's the ground bait going in. And that is about what's happening in my feeder. And hopefully you can see i put it there. Look, it is pouring off that oil. All fish oil, all natural. Two different DNA species. The secret raptor oil. It even goes misty, even, even goes into fine bubbles there. You've got the colours coming up here, which I'm hoping you can see. I haven't got Polaroid, so you should be able to see it. But you can see tiny bubbles there, and I believe that's what helps hold the fish in the swim as well. I'm tempted to sort of tweak it and do you know what I can see fish out there on the surface my god there's fish moving out there I wonder if that's pieces of brand just out there you probably won't see it because it's got a wide angle lens here I think what I'm going to do is come back tomorrow afternoon just see what I get I've got three and see what I can get maybe tomorrow afternoon might even have to be Monday Sunday's got to be a murder and mayhem in the state of your fishery but there's definitely definitely fish cruising on the surface Guys, I'm on. Trying to get clipped up here for you. Rod nearly came out of the rest. And there we are. A carp at this. Oh, he's come off, has he? No, he hasn't. He's come back on again. He's hooked himself twice. That's a weird one. Now, you watch him go right through my other line. I'm going to take a gamble and try and come underneath my other line up there. So that one can stay up there. Maybe we're wrong. Oh, he's going kind of weird fight this, he's just swimming straight in. Oh, I think I might have lost him. Yeah, I lost him. But at least I've... Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I've left that... I've left the other one in there. This one just bumped off. I've got the banded pellet back. I'm going to leave that one out as long as I can. Just in case, because you never know. A number of times I've been doing this, left the rod out as long as I could, and I've got a buckled rod 
with the second fish on. It's out there fishing. Let's get that just nice and tight, or right, quite tight. All right, here we go. Let's get this kitty out there. I'm aiming for those rushes over there. So you can see those rushes just to the right of those. I've got a bit of a bit of wind that carries me a bit. You can see the seagulls there, he likes it. And then back here, I'm just keeping them absolutely. I'll give it one bump. And you just keep it absolutely nice and high like that. A bit of tension on it. And I'm right there to grab should it buckle over. And there's the bite on that one. You can see maybe maybe you can see that oil out there coming off the ground bait. Whoa. They're around it already. They get a lot of roach and the little roach are nibbling away at that ball of ground bait. That attracts the carp and I think after a while it will dissipate. So they've eaten all that ground bait, the roach. And if the carp doesn't find it, oh, he's still banging, that's lying. So I don't know you guys are going to see that. Oh, here we go. Oh, missed him, missed him on the other one. Oh, you can see that big slit coming off there. And then when the little roach have eaten it away, it goes very quiet. I think that's when I need to rebait. So all the time the rod top's tweaking away, there's a chance that it could be Carp City. Carp Central, I'm going to call it. All right. You see how I'm working, rotating from one to the other. Obviously, I've got my eye on this rod here. Sometimes you see a quiver on it at the broad buck, meaning it's buckling over and about to depart into the lake. There we go. Let's see if I now here's good because the wind is drifting my oil off the previous cast, previous cast over there. And you can see that over there, hopefully. That's on the uh, money. A little bit short, but I don't think it matters too much. I'll give it one bump, put it down, and then I'm ready to give this one a... Now, this one's gone light. I know the ground bait's come off of this because I could bump it straight away, so I'm going to refeed that one. Just keep that going constantly. If I come back tomorrow afternoon, I think I'm going to bring some more feed with me. Certainly, you bring some more raptor oil. Yeah, the pellet's okay. Banded pellet's all right. That sets on. You too can own a pair of trousers like this. I might put these on eBay. Trousers complete with ground bait. Rotate those. I think I went a little bit, a little bit right on that one. One bump, put it down, tension up. Copy, duplicate with the other one. Tension it, tension it, tension it. I think I'm clear. I think I'm clear. I've got a boat over there. As you can see. I'm trying to put the camera on. I've got it hooked up again. I don't know what you guys will get out of this. We'll see if we can't get this fish out this time. I mean, he's gone left, so my other rod is up here. So, oh God, don't quiver, please don't quiver. It's called a quiver tip. I'm playing this fish here. And this one's got a little bit of a nervous tweak about it. I've gone back wide with this as well, just in case. There's the fish down there. My goodness, I wish I'd come earlier in the afternoon. Just could be that. In fact, I'm on the edge of that gravel bar and I'm at distance. Maybe the other angle is... Oh, just using a different method, I suppose. Come on, fish. Come on, fish. I'm pretty sure this one's going to go. Pretty sure it's going to go. This one's going well. This one is really going well. Well, you've got to be careful if you could suddenly come in with like a 
eight to ten pounder here at Watmore. You never know. You never know what size you're going to get. This is another sort of common about six pounds. Oh, come on, fish. I'm going to bully him a bit. Get me my new magic net. Uh, or not. As the case may be. i to keep an eye on that rod up there. Oh, gee. Oh! <laughs> it's gone. It's all gone. Oh, the back line's off. <laughs> I, do, I do tell you guys. I did tell you this is going to happen and it's happened. Oh my god. Twice in one day. Look at this. This is absolutely phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Still, the good news is I've got one in and one out. I'm going to take a gamble. And you can rest this one, I think, in the bushes. Like that. If he comes off, you know I've hooked two. I just need to get one in first. Unfortunately, he's really giving me some trouble. Oh, he's in. He's out, he's in. I think Mad Fish have got to get me a, a bigger net. Go get me a bigger net. The other rod's still tight. How am I going to get this sorted? Oh my god. What a session. Why do I come up with these? Weird ideas. I think the other one's still on, guys. This one's going back. Nets come unscrewed. Cables everywhere. And here we go on number two. Here we go on number two. Whew, it's a handy over there. Having a walk around, doing a ticket collection. Well, I was really lucky, barbless hooks, this one not to fall off. I guess as he's swimming around, that the uh, weight of the feeder helps hold the fish, a hook in the fish's mouth. I did think, you know, all the time, all the time that second one might go, second one might go. Because what I think happens is they come around in batches. That's what I think's happened. I'm gonna give this one a better welly. Give him a bit of, oh, he's come off. Oh, that's what you get for giving him too much welly. Anyhow, guys, you saw I had two fish on there. No problem at all, second time it's happened. I'm gonna go for three now. See if there's three double hookups. Well, I'll come back. Well, I'll tell you what time it is. It's really early. It's Graham o'clock. It's 2.30 again, so almost to a tee, I'm back to the same time. Probably won't get that same swim. It's brighter now, a little bit of sunshine come out, I finished all my fencing jobs this morning, so it's another rush, that's why it's so late. I'm gonna give it a go, but what I've bought in amongst all my junk here is, wait for this, gonna love this one, guys, my beach tripod, so that I can actually do my high stack fishing. Let's move that out before I break the lead off. I could do my high stack fishing, fishing really high, because I'm not gonna tell you yet how I got on, but I mean, it was pretty non-stop action. I don't know if it's going to work again. Second time, this will be the test of it. So I'm going to get my um, sack barrow out, load it up. It's my new best friend, the barrow, and see if I can go and find a swim. It's Sunday, it's busy, bright sky. Underneath the cables, is that good luck or bad luck? Electromagnetic field, got to get in the right swim for that. Right, lucky fishing hat. Let's get going.
Right guys, I'm all set up. I've got here, just show you, the beach rest going all the way up there. And this fitting at the bottom, which takes the cups, the rod would normally be up here. And I've slid it right down the base here, put it down the bottom, and at the top, it's just got irregular cups here, look. It's just like you can rest in. So they're nice and wide, nothing should pull out of there. And it's got them about the right angle I want, so I'm pretty well, uh, pretty well set up there, as you can see, bait-wise. I've got ground bait, I've got, as, as per the mix, but I'm putting into it some of my raptor oil again, because last night I think that definitely worked. There we go. I'm going to rinse out. I don't want to waste any of it. Check the surface out. And then hopefully with a big camera, you'll be able to see it on the surface. The important thing is give that a really good mix up. Stirring it around with a discorder here because I get that oil over as much of the uh, bait as I can. I really should have bought a bit more, but I used so much yesterday, like half a jar full. So get that mixed up. Soaked in amongst that brown. This brown especially is going gonna, is gonna to soak all that oil up. And this is my grey two. It's not my best. The darker the oil is, the better it is generally. This is my grade two, not my number one premium, which I say for shark fishing, obviously. I'm not going to use it on carp, I'm not going to waste that on carp. And the other thing is, when you, you're mixing up, it's about the right consistency there. And so just mixing it up like that, right? When you wash your hands down in here, there's no reason. Look at all those particles coming off to wash the forceps. Look, all that lot, and I can assure you, most commercial carp fisheries, they will come in close here late, late in the afternoon, early evening. So always don't be worried about rinsing your hands off close in here and check it out later on. I'm aiming to reach that gravel bar out there. Before I was down here casting across, wasn't quite sure where it is, but I think I want to go about two swims to the left with those guys over, over there, about as far as I can get. Rig the damage was. My cage feed, I'm calling it a cage feed, who knows what they're called. This feeder here, I put a bit of valve rubber there, just as a bit of buffer when I'm casting. Actually, I've got a tag in there, need snipping off. And then I've got a link of the same reel line, I haven't gone ridiculously light. I've got, what's that, six inches, size 12 barbless hook, just there, and the feeder very very close there get it filled up hopefully you guys can see this well what I probably do is actually going to ban that pellet first now this is what I do with these I was given these bands by uh, a guy up on the river Y one of the bailiffs up there so I had the wrong size I think for 8 mil and he gave me these little ones here which I've got to restock with. Now they go on like this, just slide them on, and then when you squeeze the plunger, as it were, I'm trying to do this slow, no, it's not going to work, it's possibly going to be one of those days. I can get that on there. That's it. I just get a four mil pellet like this, stretch the band over the pellet, make sure you get it right in the middle. That's just rolled slightly to one side, one in the middle. And then I just put my hook underneath the band. Hopefully you guys can see that. Just there. Then just a question of filling up that cage feeder. Now it's all running, free running, but I don't think it hurts to actually mould that bait around the swivel and everything. So it gives it a bit of a tugability to it, you know? Get it the right shape, otherwise it won't cast well.
There we go, that's ready to go out. Hand wipe. Bit of a waste using a hand wipe when you see the state of my trousers, but there you go. Keeps your wife happy. Now then, this is the first cast of the second session. Make sure your drag's done up. The other guy is over by those ducks, that's where he's coming and Tom and going. Out there, a long way brush. I'm going to keep that as my right hand rod. Just come off that drag a bit. Switch those two over. And just put a bit of tension in that rod top. There, like that. You can see it up there. I'll pick it up with a big camera later on. Let's get the second rod out. And what I'm going to do, people, is I'm going to cast over there and hopefully you might or might not be able to see the slit going down off that first cast, but I'm going to cast the second one and leave the big camera going as well. And you should, if I get a... Let's have a look about right. I want that swim. There. You should, with a bit of luck, be able to see the oil come off when it impacts. You know, just let that dissipate. I'm going to put it in the rest. Well, guys, I'm on a fish. I'll come back to that same swim. So I couldn't get to the swim I wanted. Just a move. I was obviously off that gravel bar. Nothing at all. Five, not even five minutes on the bar. I'll get myself sorted here. Got a fish will tell. Guys, this fish, I can't seem to do anything with this one. He's been in and out, stripping line, backwinding me. Hopefully, just get to see it. I mean, it could be just a, I'll call it a regular six pound or something like that, but it feels much bigger, it feels much bigger. Man, I can't do a thing with it. Oh, guys, I've got no memory card left in a minute. It looks like a comma, I think. It's not boiling on the surface like a big one does, you know, you see. Well, I can see the fish, I can see it's a good comma. Oh, maybe it's quite a nice fish. I'm not going to bother with the other camera, guys. I have to get what we get. Too many times. Just look at the dorsal fin on that one. That is superb. I'd say he's real close to being a double, I don't know what you guys think. In the nines and tens. But I do you know it's a long time since I've seen one with a fin as good as that. And a huge tail. And that's obviously the reason he gave me such a huge scrap. The method works. Did I see the bite? <laughs> I heard the tripod creak and falling over. Just looking around at the time. High stack carp fishing definitely works with that feeder long range.
Great fish here, great fish. Look at that tail, and look at the tail. Small wonder it gave me such a huge scrap and fits in the net just about right. Oh, yeah, he's, he's gonna be close to 10, I'd say nines. Nine and a half, check the other rod. Back on Magic Pig 37, five minutes, and there we go. What a super fish. Got his head down there, recovering under the staging. Hopefully you can see him. There he goes. I can see him, it's got polar eyes. Don't look very big in the water, do they? Wonder what a big one in the water looks like. <laughs> well, now I'll tell you what I had yesterday. And I still haven't even rigged my catapult up. Yesterday in the swim, guys, I wasn't here more than a couple of three hours. I had one fish, and I had a double, and I had a double, and I had a double. You saw somebody in action. I finished. Wait for this. I hooked 14 carp. I got 10 out. It was so manic I couldn't get to film everything. And the battery, something bizarre happened to the battery on this camera. I've got the big one now, it's back up. And it got really hot. So something wrong with the battery. And yes, the other battery's at home. Whew. Anyway, nice fish. Well pleased with that one. Well pleased with this rod rest. Definitely using this again. And as you can see, it's right up out of the water and I can bait up over there where that shadow line is. Right, guys, I am in the assumed position yet again. I just bumped the feeder that time, thought I'd missed the fish, and know it's hooked up. Superb evening, very, very bright. There's actually some heat in the sun for a change. And I'm gonna try and leave this other rod out there. After yesterday's hectic three times doubling up on fish. I don't think in my life I've ever had three doubles like that. Double hookups on two rods, three times in one three hour session. So they must have been on the bike big time. I'm gonna wheel this one, it's not as big as the last one. I can feel that straight away. But I tell you what, it just goes to show I was in the wrong space, that side, the other side of that pipe, three swims down, must be off the edge of the gravel. I've come around this side, I cast slightly where I cast yesterday afternoon, and I've been here 20 minutes now, two bites, and at the moment, two hookups, not exactly two fish. Just ease this one in smoothly. I don't want to lose him, I just want to keep him coming towards me. I can see him out there on the surface, trying to keep their head coming slowly. Sometimes you fight fish really hard and they fight really, really hard coming back. And I find if you're just nice and smooth and steady, you know, ease that fish in. Keeping his head coming towards you all the time like this, he can't turn round. It's called tuna pumps when we go tuna fishing, but short, short, sharp strokes. I mean, you probably pull the lips off these things if you did tuna fishing with these, but same principle applies. If you can get the fish just coming towards you like that, I don't want to let him turn around which he's probably going to do when I go around my other rod here. There, now he's changed his routine, now he's going back out again. And you can see how I could actually get him coming towards the, the rod, constant pressure. Oh yeah, nice fish, nice fish mirror. Nice to get one of each, a mirror and a common. Now, see he's turned round, now look how he's turned round and he's going nuts. I had him coming towards me at a constant speed. And now, he's going do lally. I don't think he's big enough to go on backwind yet. Let's just tip him over. Sometimes you can tip them over sideways. Right, here he comes, hopefully. A few more head shakes, he obviously knows the net's here. He's here, too late. He knows where the net is now, that's for sure. Nearly came, oh, nice fish, nice fish. Keeps still, keeps still. Let's give him some tonic immobility. It does work, guys, look. I'll just show you, you've seen it on many times. Works many times, you just hold the fish upside down. Look, can't tell you how many times I've shown that. It's tom tonic immobility. Dead still, calms him down. Put him in the net, get him back in the water.
No, it's fish. Go on. Normally I'd leave one rod out, but I have got a habit here, because it's a commercial fishery, of, I want to impact both ground bait balls that's pretty well close together. So there's only one sort of spooking session coming. I've had, well, I've put 14, I've put 16, and I've got 12. But what taught me today is I've got to get on the edge of that gravel bar. And that's where the fish are. So thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Watch Mike's outdoor show, the Totally Awesome Outdoor Show. We'll see you again somewhere. Sea, river, canal, beach, boat. We'll be out with a rod somewhere.